This is AutoLine Daily, the show dedicated to enthusiasts of the global automotive industry. Good news for automakers, the port strike in the U.S. is over for now. The Dock Workers Union announced they've reached a tentative deal with port operators to end the strike immediately. Reuters reports that workers will get a 62% pay raise. But the dispute isn't entirely over because they've only agreed to extend their current contract until January 15th of 2025. So they'll need to settle all other outstanding issues by then. But if the strike had continued longer, it would have had a huge impact on the auto industry. The 36 ports affected by the strike handle nearly $38 billion worth of vehicles a year, and they account for 70% of all U.S. car imports. Spain said, don't do it. Germany said, drop it. But in the end, the EU voted to impose tariffs on Chinese EVs, which would start next month and last for the next five years. And yet, the EU says it will continue to negotiate with China right up until the deadline. More on that in a moment. Ten European countries voted in favor of the tariffs. Five said no and 12 abstained. But the 10 who voted yes were enough to move it forward. However, the tariffs would only apply to EVs, not PHEVs, hybrids, or ICE vehicles. EVs made in China now account for 20% of the European EV market, including EVs made in China by European automakers. And last year, China exported nearly half a million vehicles to Europe. One idea being floated to avoid the tariffs is that China would agree to a minimum price for its EVs and would not sell cars below that. One thing's for sure, by voting in favor of tariffs with the deadline only weeks away, the EU has a much stronger bargaining position with China, which it may need because China has promised to retaliate by targeting European products imported to China. Just to show you how Europe is struggling with EVs, the Swedish EV startup Northvolt is fighting to survive. It's running into problems ramping up battery production right as EV sales are slowing down in Europe and Chinese competition is heating up. Northvolt was started in 2015 by former Tesla executives and it quickly raised billions from a number of companies, including Volkswagen, which owns 23%, as well as Volvo, BMW, and Goldman Sachs. But while Northvolt has built thousands of batteries, they haven't met automotive standards. BMW recently canceled a $2 billion battery order from Northvolt. Then last week, Northvolt laid off 1,600 employees and abandoned plans to expand its factory in Sweden. It says it's moving ahead with plans to open new plants in Germany and Canada, but it hinted it may need to partner with Chinese battery companies to get up to volume production. With EV growth slowing in Europe, there's more pushback coming to strict CO2 emission rules that go into effect next year. Last month, the ACEA, a group that represents most major automakers in Europe, said it wants to delay the targets by two years. And now the Prime Minister of the Czech Republic is calling on the EU to soften the targets. He also wants to review the region's 2035 ICE ban because of slowing EV growth something Italy has also called for. Luca De Meo, the president of the ACEA and the CEO of Renault, warned that automakers could face fines of 15 billion euros next year for missing CO2 targets. There's some interesting rumors coming out of the European media about a possible merger between Stellantis and Renault. Actually, what's most interesting is how the two have reacted to the rumors. Carlos Tavares, the CEO of Stellantis, said it was, quote, pure speculation, while Luca De Meo, the CEO of Renault, said they were just, quote, rumors. Now, if there was nothing to it, wouldn't you say, nah, it's not true. And so, they're not actually denying there could be a possible merger, they're just saying it's a rumor. And that's what makes this story so interesting. There's nothing wrong with heavy metal. But with world-class composite material, Tejin Automotive Technologies makes vehicles lighter, safer, and more eco-friendly. 
Reports out of Korea a few weeks back were right. Waymo and Hyundai are partnering on robo-taxis. The two officially signed a deal so Waymo can get special versions of the Ionic 5 that will be made at Hyundai's new plant in Georgia. The vehicles will roll off the assembly line with modifications for AVs, like redundant hardware and power doors, and then will get integrated with Waymo's autonomous tech. But it's unclear exactly when we'll see Waymo Hyundai's on the road. Testing starts towards the end of next year, but they only say the vehicles will hit Waymo's fleet, quote, in the years to follow. This will increase production of the Ionic 5, and Hyundai plans to produce AVs in, quote, significant volume for Waymo over multiple years. But while Waymo is or will operate in Arizona, California, Texas, and Georgia, its fleet has roughly six to 700 vehicles right now. However, we think its deal with Hyundai solves a few problems for Waymo. It was going to make robo-taxis with Zeker for the U.S., but since the U.S. is going to restrict Chinese EVs and tech, it really can't bring those vehicles into the market. Waymo says it's still working with Zeker, but likely for other regions of the world now. Also, Waymo uses Jaguar I-Paces in its fleet, and Jaguar announced that it's killing off all of its models except one before it goes all electric. So, I think the Ionic 5s will eventually replace those Jaguars. Tesla is running into manufacturing problems with a new type of cathode process for its 4680 battery cells. That's according to a report from the website, The Information. It says Tesla is losing 70 to 80% of its cathodes to manufacturing defects, compared to 2% for other types of batteries. It's trying to develop a dry coating process that would cut the cost and energy needed to make them. But the report says it can't get them up to the line speed that it needs. Tesla is developing four versions of the 4680 cell using the dry coating process, including one code named NC05 for the robotaxi that gets unveiled next week. Another version is slated to go into the Cybertruck by the middle of next year. Renault is showing off what its future models could look like with a new concept called the Emblem. A main focus of the car is reducing emissions. Renault says it would be able to reduce greenhouse gas emissions 90% compared to a similar car today by using more renewable energy in the production process, build with reused parts, and implement recycled and natural materials. Another way to reduce emissions is to cut weight. It says designers and engineers hunted for every kilogram they could to get its weight to 1,750 kilograms or about 3,850 pounds. The emblem is based on Renault's Amp R medium platform and comes with a dual powertrain setup. It features both a 40 kilowatt hour NMC battery pack and a 30 kilowatt fuel cell. Also packaged into the architecture is a 2.8 kilogram hydrogen tank and a 160 kilowatt or 214 horsepower electric motor that drives the rear wheels. The entire setup is estimated to provide 1,000 kilometers or roughly 620 miles of range. Look for the emblem to make its debut at the Paris Auto Show, and it says we'll learn more about it at the end of the month. Lincoln recently revealed the new Navigator, so it was only a matter of time before Ford showed off the new Expedition. We'll have a video coming out this weekend or early next week, diving into a lot of the specifics with a few Ford experts. But let's go over some of the highlights until then. Designers said they wanted the big SUV to be more distinctive, especially at night, which is why they gave it a DRL that wraps under and around the grille. Like the Navigator, the Expedition gets a split rear tailgate, but Ford expects its customers to take advantage of the rear space more than Lincoln does. It doesn't get the Navigator's pillar-to-pillar -pillar screen, but does come with a large display on top of the dash in front of the driver, as well as a decent-sized infotainment screen in the middle. Power comes from a 3.5-liter EcoBoost V6, which is available as a standard version that makes 400 horsepower, or a high-output version that makes 440 horses. The latter comes standard on the new Tremor Expedition. Tremor is Ford's more off-road focused trim line that it's offered on other models, but this is a first for the Expedition. 
the new Expedition arrives in dealer showrooms next spring. But that brings us to the end of today's show and this week. I hope that you have a great weekend. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, solutions for your journey. Intrepid Control Systems, over-the-air engineering boost your game. Tajin Automotive Technologies, the formula for better mobility. And by ZF. Hi, I'm Don Hatfield from Intrepid Control Systems, and I'm presenting the wireless BMS solution from Intrepid Control Systems. Uh, come and see us in this demo at booth 1201 at the Battery Show. And also, analog devices will be there as well. We'd be happy to talk to you and help you with your solution. Performance that shines even in the rain. That's what really matters. Bridgestone Potenza tires, improved grip in wet conditions. Wards is the industry leader for news, data, and analysis. That's why companies across the globe subscribe to our premium service, maybe even your own. Log in for subscriber access now. Check your company's intranet for details and rely on wardsauto.com to keep you informed.